<laughs> now we're going to get to the Thunder Dome cage match. Ric Flair and Sting with Ole Anderson versus Terry Funk and the Great Mooter with Gary Hart and a backwards walking Dragon Master, which um, I actually thought, I was looking at him and thinking, is that Curtis Hughes? This can't be Curtis Hughes. And he was walking back. Anyway, that yeah, was something yeah. I'd completely forgotten about. And then <laughs> Bruno Sammartino, a little guy who had a bit of success in the wrestling business that I'm sure you may have heard of one time or another. Philly loves him, of course. Uh, he just quit the WWF. He'd been a commentator uh, up until maybe about 88 there. And then, you know... We, uh, he had many falling outs with Vince over the years well, for various little, different reasons. A little texture to that, you know, him having the falling out uh, and being an announcer to that time. That was the vestige of the heat between his son David and him. Uh, David, uh, he did not want David in the business, and David just at some point, 20, 21 years old, said he's going to do it. And Bruno said, okay, do everything I tell you. And to get him into the WWF, they made him sign a contract for so many wrestling matches, I think like four or six matches per year and commentating until 88, 89, whatever it was. And uh, and then David leaves and you know, just up and walks out of which one day and Bruno stuck under this contract. And it, it, it was sad because uh, you know, Bruno went to his grave and he and his son had never reconciled. And I find that heartbreaking to, 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 to know. What was the fallout between Bruno and David? Was it about steroids or was it something else? No. No, it was that David, uh, he, like I said, he didn't want David in the business. And uh, at, at some age as an adult, David just informed him he's going to do it with or without him. Yeah. And Bruno knew that without him, you know, a lot of people had heat with Bruno because, you know, he had been that top guy for so long and everything. Uh, I don't mean like he, like they hated his guts. It was just that he was always that top guy holding everybody, not holding everybody down, just blocking everybody because he was so, so successful. Uh to get him into the WWF with Vince Jr., uh, they they made him sign a contract that it was like either four or six actual matches per year and then doing the commentary, I think, for two or three years. And so David, about 10 weeks in, I think it was, uh, is wrestling Big Raw and Sean, I think, Philadelphia. Yeah. And he, he has him body slam him 10 times, and he pins him. David jumps right up, walks the back, grabs his bag, and walks out. And Bruno's stuck in this contract. And uh, that was part of it. I'm sure there were other issues as well. And I know a few others that were personal to the family. Uh, but I find, as a father, I find it heartbreaking that these two couldn't find common ground. Just, just that, you know, proud Italian heritage that they're just, you know, nope, he's dead to me, dead to me, that kind of thing. And, and just sad, you know, it's because uh, both of them are really good guys. Well, I'm looking here. I mean, David Sammartino, I know he had that Ron Shaw that actually had Ron Shaw as a guest, in fact, uh, a, a couple of years ago. And uh, I think Ron was giving the uh, the uh, in-character answer for that. But, yes. I mean, like David Sammartino's 84, you know, he's actually given a bit of a shove in the early days. And it was, you know, I realise it's mostly contingent on Bruno working, whether yeah. David uh, does well or not. And then he's there for 85, he's there for 86, and then... But then he keeps he keeps turning back up. He turns up in 87 for a, 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 for a summer, it looks like. And then he even has a few matches in 88 as well. So that's why it's a bit confusing with me, because Bruno's stuck in the contract, I understand that. But David yeah. does keep coming back. And the last yeah, match we've got here is David Sammartino being, <laughs> losing to, in a dark match, Steve Blackman. In '88, yeah. who had a very wow. brief uh, couple of dark matches, he was about to get signed. Blackman, then he ended up doing a tour and getting sick for yeah. six years or something crazy like that. Sure. Well, I, I think, and again, this is just a guess on my part, but understanding how the contracts work, you walking out doesn't break that contract. So I'm sure Bruno on the inside was trying to play ambassador between those two and getting him back in at certain places, and then you know something else goes awry or. Uh, David, for his part, I think what he did wrong, and I've said this about David Flair, uh, uh, Eric Watts to some degree, coming in under, you know, if your dad's name is Rick Flair, if your dad's name is Bruno Sammartino, if your dad's name is Bill Watts or whatever, I mean, th th these are huge casting shadows in the industry. Uh, and you're going to be held to a standard that's probably far more stringent than I was held uh, or maybe Pillman or, or Zank were held uh, because we don't have that pedigree. They will never, ever be able to 
overshadow their, you know, world famous parents. And Dave, if you go back and watch those matches, uh, A, he was much smaller than Bruno, like 230, 235, great shape, but much smaller than Bruno. But he was trying to wrestle like Bruno, you know, the knees to the head and, the, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And it just didn't translate. Uh, and I think in large part because Bruno just was, was facing one of the largest shadows in our industry, uh, history of our industry. So uh, that would be my guess as to why it kept popping back up because it couldn't work anywhere else. You know, Vince it would typically be a three-year contract uh, once signed. So that would be my guess, and I'm sure there's something connected to that with it.